everyone, and welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. My name is Peggy Ployer, and I am the founder and CEO of SPED Homeschool, as well as the regular host of this broadcast that happens every Tuesday, Empowering Homeschool Conversations. Um, we have had uh, a good kickoff to this month. We're um, focusing on mental health because May happens to be mental health month. And we really wanted to um, create some resources for you um, as parents and parent educators on how do you help your children navigate some of these really tough places, these valleys of life. And um, a lot of resources are out there for from various um, public schools and, and other things. But how, we, we don't talk about it in the homeschooling realm. I think sometimes we don't think it happens in the homeschooling realm, but guess what? All of, well, two of my children um, out of the three have struggled in this area as well as I have, have two personally. And so I want to tell you that we are not um, definitely... Um, this is something our community deals with as well. And um, so we want to bring that spot uh, spotlight on that and help you with um, navigating mental health issues. And I've got a wonderful guest to share with you today as we talk about, um, about using creativity and self-expression to improve a student's mental health. I want to welcome you, Jennifer. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, I am so excited because oftentimes when we focus on mental health, um, we we want to focus on everything that's going wrong. And I think this this twist that you're you're going to bring to us today is that there is there's beauty and there is ways to find out more about ourselves, about our children when we go through these tough spots. And I can't wait to start this conversation um, because it. It, it's it's so much needs to be done. Um, and if you're joining us, um, we would love for you to be part of this conversation. Um, so we have viewers popping on. I see the numbers increasing there. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, just know that you can put comments or questions in the feed. We'd love to know where you're, you're watching from. Um, if um, there's any questions specifically that you have for Jennifer that you would like addressed during this hour. Um, definitely put those in too. And um, you, if you're watching on Facebook, on our Facebook page, you can do the same thing. Just know if you're watching in the Facebook group, the support group, that you need to give permission to StreamYard, who is our broadcasting platform, to be able to post those publicly because it is a private group. Um, and if you're watching on the Empowered Homeschool Network, um, just know that you have to click into YouTube in order to make comments. If you make comments in the Empowered Homeschool Network, then um, we will only see them after the show. So um, we want to make sure that we we get your questions answered while we're we're here. So um, I think that's all the the book or the just housekeeping stuff that I need need to do. And um, so, so yeah, so Jennifer, let's, um, let's kind of kick off this time with um, just helping my viewers get to know a little bit about you. Um, and I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself, your background in the mental health community, and just how you've used your professional training. I know you're going to talk a little bit about that and your personal interests as well to help individuals navigate mental health challenges. I'm so happy to be here. Um, so I've been an OT, occupational therapist, about 22 years now. Mm -hmm. And my first job out of school was working for New York State Psychiatric Institute where with chronically, um, chronic adults, schizophrenic, bipolar. Mm -hmm. um, and before that, I wanted to share an experience yeah. that... Um, when I was a level two student, so this is before I was even practicing, I'd bring mm -hmm. a guitar with me, bring a guitar wherever I went, and I played in a detox unit for adults mm. who had, um, you know, um, who had been in there to try to get over drug use and things like that. Right. And it was not in a good neighborhood. So I brought my guitar and I played for the mm. patients, and my supervisor at the time was just, she was okay with it. They were flexible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the patients were like, why would you play for us? Mm. Like, they were like, they didn't. And that just, 
and then if someone had given me like a card said like this move might change my life hmm. just the fact of someone giving in a creative way wanting to give to them where they didn't even feel like they were worthy of it hmm. and from then on almost every site anywhere I've ever worked I've always brought instruments with me to hmm. play to either teach how to play or just to sing and create yeah. together and um it's been really amazing mm. working with children with autism who are nonverbal, then able to speak at the end of the school year. I mean, mm. literally, and you know, wow. and um, currently being a homeschool mom, um, I'm really grateful to present this to this community because mm. of always being able to share this with establishments, but this, this, like, it's so needed. And mm -hmm. the other thing that comes to mind is that, I'm currently on a um, a AOTA American Association of Occupational Therapy. They have mm -hmm. a mental health school task force because oh, really? this is years ago. One out of five children was found to have mental health issues, hmm. and this is nationwide in the school system. And you know mm -hmm. the homeschool community also. This is just <laughs> as relevant, really yes. important, mm -hmm. and. You know, and we might not have all the resources that the schools do. And mm -hmm. so it's, I'm really happy to be able to share whatever I can for this community. Yeah. Um, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free. I will do my best. You know, <laughs> I'm going through my own like challenges like everyone else and right. just trying to navigate it. And, um, you know, when it comes to using creative expression, um, I work currently at a psychiatric institute. I work on an inpatient unit with a lot of young adults right now who mm. have depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and we use music a lot in mm. addition to other things. But, you know, songwriting together, mm. teaching an instrument, um, a lot of times they have learning disabilities. So being able to navigate that disability to still teach in a way that works for them right. has been wonderful cognitively as well as like just self-esteem. Mm. So that's something I've been really amazed to, to, I've been doing that for about 22 years now running these wow. kind of groups and um, it's gone to just drumming to music to mm -hmm. full fledged concerts to songwriting wow and um currently on the unit where i'm specifically at two days a week at the psychiatric unit we have songwriting groups and hmm. um and i'll tell you it's just it's it's really humbling and just of note you know when working with patients who have schizophrenia like really mm -hmm. acutely sick when we have our concerts they are focused the whole time so mm. music is extremely grounding and powerful when it yeah. comes to um, a lot of sensory ways of integrating and learning mm -hmm. and socially. Um, so there's a lot of stories that can be shared. Um, yeah. And the other thing that recently happened, um, this is due to the pandemic, I had to change mm -hmm. sites. So mm. I ended up working in a school specifically for children who could not be in school, a general mm. regular school, because of mental health issues. Oh, wow. And um, I was there for a short time and um, not like kind of doing unconventional OT, like specifically mm. using music and wow. um, creativity. And um, we had some children who really behavioral, like very difficult. Mm. And I really had not, besides being aggressive, you know, mm -hmm. um, very, very, can't sit still very un unruly like mm -hmm. I, I was it was even hard for me to be around them it was so difficult but oh. I having them learn a guitar mm. I'm amazed they were so into it and they were just wow. uh, like just like kind of humbled and happy and and their strengths came out that mm. they could attain because when a child has a learning disability sometimes they just don't want to do anything yeah, because yeah, they just, do. They shut down, mm -hmm. right? And finding what works yeah. that is, that they love can open up so many doors, also for them, and like almost like shine their light when they're right. so used to so much dark. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I I keep in mind this one child who was just you know he was about to basically go on medication and be hospitalized, 
But mm. this one boy was focusing with me for 40, 40 minutes, learning a guitar, wow. you know? So I think learning on like trying to understand what sets him off mm-hmm. and then also how to, um, how to handle it. And right. so this was a beautiful situation. And, and also, um, you know, within, within my own, you know, personal challenges, you know, when it comes to having a child who's had special needs and Mm -hmm. it's, it's, so I feel it's not black or white, it's gray, Mm. you know, Um, Mm -hmm. whether you have a child on the spectrum or you have a child who's, who I would say everyone needs to work through mental health issues. I wouldn't say you know, it's true. so much, it's, yes. it's huge, especially mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, and a big part of also what's really kind of opened my eyes is learning more a bit of um, very, very deep inner work, like looking at the way we see things and exploring mm. things like Vedanta and, and like very like sacred teachings about how we think about about life and and view the way we are you know because mm. we like listen if i'm a tune if i'm playing an instrument i mm-hmm. tune the instrument you know we as humans can have to tune ourselves to be optimal yes and, and so that's kind of like the metaphor of being a parent being being mm. an educator and we model that for our children which is mm. needed now more than ever Yes, yes, because it's, it, well, we, I think our society has proven the way that it's going, it develops mental health issues, <laughs> even more so because the, the numbers just keep getting worse and worse. Um, and, and it is, it's back to those basic, simple practices that we forget that are so necessary in our lives, those rhythms. And, um, and like you said, modeling that, um, I love that. And, um, yes, I'm sure you, you have many examples and many stories to share. I just, I just love that, that you had the boldness to walk in with your, your guitar and say, let's try this. Um, and you know, it, those things that excite us. And if you have this, this creative Bent, and I think we all do. Mm-hmm. Some of us are just more tuned into it like you are. <laughs> um, but to share that with others and to say, well, why don't you try and, um, and yeah, and see what it brings out. Cause it sounds like it's really been a blessing to your students that you've done that. Um, so that's, that's super. Um, so just know if you're watching um, that you can um, send questions in um, via the post um, that you're watching on or the feed. Um, but but we've got some questions here too. So I'm going to just ask mine away um, and feel free to interrupt us. Um, but, but Jennifer, as we're kind of getting started here, um, are there factors that parents should know about when it comes to mental health dynamics in specific individuals, um, like age groups, family situations, or maybe even other factors that mm-hmm. we may not even consider right away as mental health, maybe warnings or um, just those red flags. Um, yeah. If we've never been exposed to them, sometimes it seems like ah, it's nothing, you know, we just dismiss it. Um, well, I think one thing very much is learning to trust our intuition. Mm. Um, that's that's kind of been a key yeah. for. Um, so for me, I guess in different ways, like as a mom, when something's not right, I have to go with my gut. Mm-hmm. And because if you have a very little one, they might not be able to say. Um, mm. And then the other thing that I just wanted to make sure I I um, I, I share. Before, besides technical stuff, is that I've had been really great graced with some very special teachers. That mm-hmm. if it wasn't for them, I really wouldn't have so much of an insight because they mm. shared that with me. So I think being open to really like look inside. Like mm. for, if I'm open to looking inside me, I'm going right. to want to learn. Mm. And I think that comes first. Mm-hmm. Um, if I didn't have that and these people, I wouldn't be able to be here today to share what I know, whether it be at the hospital or with, mm-hmm. with you now. So well, that's good. Yeah. Um, 
So that's, that's one. And then, um, you know, when it comes to certain age groups, you know, um, can you hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. When it comes to certain age groups, I would say like children, for example, when, when we don't have enough sleep, we don't have enough nutrition. You know, those are certain foundational things for the brain, right? Mm -hmm. So sleeping through the night, you know, we want to look at like neurotransmitters, for example, like what are the base, right. the building blocks of that, you know, having structure mm -hmm. to the day, is the parent mm -hmm. able to, to handle and cope? And can they actually say, oh, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Or let's mm -hmm. take a break. Like, how do we model that instead of right. like, and it's a constant practice um, mm -hmm. on how we treat ourselves, how we treat others. Um, right because it's not always going to be perfect. Um, mm -hmm. so, so young ones, it's important to have like a sense of safety, that sense of structure. Right. And sometimes, especially in the homeschool community, we like, you know, schools are structured. That's mm. the way they're set up. Right. You know, the question is how do we structure it in a way? That's a that very good question. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that, yeah, that it works and there's predictability. Mm -hmm. um, and so keeping that as like a foundation mm -hmm. um, and as, as they get older, like, you know, family situations too, whether it be a single mom, you know, having things at least with consistency, that's great. What if there's multicultural right. families and people do dis things different ways mm. you know how do we put the person first how do we say this is making me really upset you know mm. but how do we you know how does this work for you and and for me mm -hmm. like making it so and because the child is always going to be exposed to these things um, right yeah. and and they're, they're normal things that we would navigate in life. Um, and like you, you talked about modeling, um, how we model, how we navigate these things is what our kids are going to copy. Um, and so, so yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. And, you know, it starts with children, you know, being young and kids from two to four. I mean, that's a critical time. They're learning so much. Mm -hmm. And then as children get older and then they get into their teen years, when we talk about mental health and we want to be technical about it, when people see their first break, like psychotic break or bipolar, that's usually when they're in their upper teens, mm -hmm. you know, so that would be their first break. But um, there are definitely signs that we want to look out for. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show you some, a little bit of a story. Like, yeah, you know, I wouldn't say a story, but on the unit where I work, where we have, I'm in New York currently, mm -hmm. and we have a whole bunch of young adults who have had visual motor issues, meaning they can't really um, read well. They, they, they have mm. challenges when it comes to right. visual focus, and then mm -hmm. they're not as successful academically as they want to be, yep. mm -hmm. and it's not addressed. They're not getting the therapy that they need, mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of pushed aside and when we want it, when it comes to mental health, you address it before it starts being really a problem. So yeah. that's the right time to, 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 um, be a support before, before they end up. So maybe the age to address it is the younger, the better as they're mm -hmm. older, then we, we want to really educate ourselves what to look out for. Um, what is, yeah. you know, what is by some, and yeah, and I think addressing the strengths, what you said, Peggy, mm -hmm. is so important. You know, yeah. how do we integrate that and, and make it um, so that we can get through these tough times and and mm -hmm. and have deep, deep values? I think that's so important. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm still learning, like delving into the teachings of Vedanta and and learning really deeply about like going inside instead of just like mm. looking at a video or doing that because so many things are now on the screen like what's here right. this is where much of the answers are you know and how do we model that as parents in this world in this society that's the opposite um mm. so yeah like teaching things like meditation and deep breathing 
um, modeling it, like I say. And on the unit where we do, we do yoga as well, which is really helpful mm. for them to tune into their breath. Um, mm. We could be a little scientific about it. You know, breath is directly related to mental health. Mm. Hugely, hugely. When you focus on the breath, you can calm the brain waves. You know, you can mm. sleep better. You digest better. Um, you have the space to process instead of just re react. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to teach that very much as a coping skill where we are on, on the mm -hmm. unit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and for my own self too, it's a constant practice. Right. And, um, and I personally find, you know, and the patients that we, we experience with too, they really respond to music because of the emotional memory that music has. Yes, it triggers it the emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oliver Sacks wrote a wonderful book called Musical Philia that I like to refer to hmm. that um, even with children with autism um, who are severely autistic, nonverbal, very, very, very um, affected, I've seen them speak by singing first. And I'm not talking about mm. one or two. I'm talking about several that we've used live instruments and a microphone. Wow. Hmm. Um, and it's been pretty, pretty, I mean, I've had multiple kids who are not talking before and they were hmm. talking at the wow. end of a 12 month school year. So it's hmm. possible. Right. And, and so I think when you mentioned hope, I mean, hmm. there are ways to address it, just like even with visual motor skills, you know, these things can be addressed, but the biggest part is identifying it mm -hmm. and knowing, oh, oh, that's why you're pushing it off the table. Hey, oh, okay, let's try it this way. Mm. You no, know, because you're not, it's not like you, you're not stupid. You're not bad. Right. We just, we, we got to work on your vision and that's okay. We do it together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard for me too. Um, right. So we do, we do that a lot. And so I think in the teenage um, and th so the school age range is more looking at visual motor skills, looking at why it's hard, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, I heard once that, um, you know, if you can teach a child that um, because I guess at, at that grade school level, they see when they struggle as the issue outside themselves. But when they go through that puberty phase, they internalize all of their issues, that and then they they say it, it's a problem with me. Um, so, like you said, if we can get to those struggles ahead of time and say, "Well, this is just something that you know that that we can work on," um, not that this is something bad about you, um, and and that you know, I, I never made the connection with mental health until you you brought that up, and and I it, it is such a a beautiful way of looking at that, that you, you definitely have to, to work on remediation with younger kids, because if not, they will internalize it and say, it's all about me. And now it becomes a mental health issue instead of just a learning issue. And I've seen that with undiagnosed adults too. Um, a lot of the parents that I work with actually who have kids that struggle said that when they got a diagnosis and same with myself, when my, my son was diagnosed on the autism spectrum and I realized that was me, what a relief that was, you know? Wow. And, um, and so, so yeah, it, it is good to be able to, to do that. And it is all about communication. I love that you talked about that. Um, and, and kind of diving into that. And I know, um, music and art and all of these things are so much about communication. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, that connection of, of how we, we can really connect. I mean, you talked about helping kids on the autism spectrum, be able to talk, um, through this creative expression and, um, just what, what is that that connection that happens and why um, that so, cause I think parents as a parent, I felt like music was just one of those things, you know, that, um, and maybe a lot of us do, cause we have all these other things we, we want to teach our kids. Um, we don't realize how critical that is, especially when we have a child that struggles with communication. So can you talk on that a little bit? Sure. Um, yeah. Usually when I do my, I, I lecture usually for the, 
some stu students at the university about this. And the first exercise that I always have them do is I have them close their eyes and them visualize themselves in the in the body of a child with autism. You know, the sounds around me, the smells, people telling me what to do, but I haven't used the bathroom in three days and I it hurts my ears because people are talking too loud. And, you know, I have like my mom's mad at me and I'm angry because, you know, I, I spilled all the milk and I just threw things today because I was just mad because I almost thought I'm feeling good. Plus, um, you know, every time I'm in a new space, I feel like I might fall. I don't like movement very much. I don't like bright mm. lights. Um, and then now I have, I mean, this, you're telling me now what to do. I don't want to do that. My tummy hurts, but I can't mm. tell you because I don't have words right now, but I can throw things. See, mm. um, I'm hungry. I can't really tell you that either. Um, so when, so this is the, I try to put myself into the shoes mm. of the person and right. they, that's powerful. And, and and use and the reason, you know, going inside lets me do that to try to understand my own intuition and, and use my gut. And then I can connect with this person. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'll tell you a story. There was this boy, Johnny, I used to work with. And, you know, he'd, he'd be on the floor tantruming, like didn't want to do anything, didn't want to mm -hmm. go to OT, nothing. Um, so I was like, well, what are we going to do? Okay. But this is after years of going through this process of learning, which took lots mm -hmm. of tears and, and a lot of, yeah. and I'm still learning. But it, <laughs> um, so what happened was he loved video games. Okay. okay. He loved looking at video games colors. I sat with him and that's what we did. We just looked at the video game covers together. Hmm. And then we did it, you know, point and take my finger pointing to stuff. He liked that. So we did it. And then he would go with me and then we would do our OT. And then we would go back. Hmm. So, um, and there was a boy, Chris, that I worked with for many years, very, uh, very severely autistic. Um, and so we would take the vibrating brain, put it near his ear. Right, the vibration, the vestibular system, the inner mm -hmm. ear. Um, that's very very much associated to sound, but also to balance and position in space. Mm -hmm. So um, so anyway, he would keep doing this, you know, and then we ended up integrating music into the session. He liked to play the piano, I'd let him play the piano, he would just do his thing. I'd use mm -hmm. one word cues. Um, and then I worked with him for about five years. He ended up speaking. I was the only mm. third person he would speak with, but he was, I was entering into his world. I right. like, why are you want so to connect? Important. Why would I want mm -hmm. to connect with you if you're not connecting with me? Mm -hmm. so, so that, that's what made that, um, that connection first. And then mm. academically we could do stuff. Um, you right. know, we did technical OT stuff like vestibular input, bouncing on mm -hmm. the ball. Um, mm -hmm. And then, Co combination of bouncing on a ball and using sound and music. I, I'm a very firm believer of when you integrate music and vestibular input, meaning mo movement and space, hmm. that really will strengthen speech. Uh, I've hmm. seen it many times. Um, using a live instrument is even better because that's what worked for him. We use an acoustic, oh. we use a piano and we use a guitar, we'd strum. Mm -hmm. um, I have multiple kids that, that worked with. Um, hmm. But the connection was there, um, right. and we did it together. So when it comes to, like, self-expression, you know, to not just have our own expectations, how we want it to be. Mm, but that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. Letting it come out from them first. Um, right. And it's a balance. It's a huge balance. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think tuning in... And the, the, I mean, there's another girl I used to work with who was really aggressive. She was a person you did not want to be with. She was 13 years old and she was like severely mm. autistic and bipolar to the point where mom was driving and she put her hands over mom's eyes when she's driving, very dangerous. Oh, wow. Mom also had bipolar disorder. And so she had her own struggles. Mm. And, um, and unfortunately, you know, this is in a school system. I didn't connect with mom. Mom wasn't available. 
And mm. us as a homeschool community, we have so much that we can give to our kids. Yes. You know, they need oh, us. They need so us true. to be at our best. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it makes me want to cry because I relate to it. And I know our world needs, our kids, next generation needs that. Mm -hmm. um, so thinking about what worked for this girl, um, we have her on the swing. I'd have her on the swing and mm -hmm. sing to her. And mm. my 150 billion percent attention was with that girl every minute of every second I was with her. Mm. And as you know, I know as homeschooling parents, sometimes we are so divided having to get chores done yes. and get this done and that gets. And then the kids sometimes really needs our 100%. So mm -hmm. how can we structure the day? So, okay, well, you know what? We're going to do 30 minutes of just me and you. And that mm -hmm. is it. And then we're going to do dinner and just dinner. We, we do it together. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you. They don't want to do it, but hey, this is what I'm doing. But mm -hmm. so keeping that connection really strong. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, that's why I'm saying so much of it boils down to being a hundred percent billion focused and present in mm -hmm. the moment and it's harder and harder and harder now more than ever oh yeah yeah because we've got our phones beeping at us and we've got you know so many things going on um that are begging for our attention and to put those boundaries i love that because we we have to make that time because if you don't establish that it's back to those those rhythms those those natural things like you were talking about at the beginning we we have to set up that structure too um and that's where our kids find safety but they also know that you're going to be there to listen when they do have the ability to communicate or they want to communicate it may not be the way you want them to communicate like the many examples you shared jennifer but for some of our kids that's the first step to more effective communication it's but we have to be willing to take those steps with them and um and yes and and i love how music and you you've learned how that 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 creative expression can really move into those spaces where we sometimes as parents get frustrated and go what am i doing and you know what is this child thinking and um and how do we get into their world and yeah and it is does take time <laughs> uh, you know and and the beautiful choice is being able to um i guess simplify you mm. know and i'm just saying it's because i've you know i've really been great grateful to the people who have helped me learn you know whether it be mm. my family um you know different friends of mine my friend charles Lurie. um he was always like, you'd see this and you pound in me. And I didn't really get it until now. Mm. I'm a bit older. Um, and my, my teacher is also um, my guru. So these are like, sometimes it takes external reminders, but it's a combination mm. of being able to look inside and also get the reminders. Um, so what I'm basically trying to say is that like we it's easy to get distracted because this is the way that life is, but mm. the, you know, one of the best gifts we can give to our kids is us. Mm. You oh, know, I love that. Yes, it is very true. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's what's most. And you know, I, you can look at even kids that are mistreated by their parents. They want to please them so bad and they want that relationship more than anything, even though it's dysfunctional. That parent-child relationship is so integral and and we we do, we take it for granted a lot when our kids are with us all the time. So I love that you you point that out. You know, um, do you have any ideas for our parents and you know, talking about let's let's spend some more time together um, on creative ways that they could or ways that they could use creative outlets to help children maybe that are dealing with anxiety or communication issues or, or other things, um, you know, even even some self-doubt, you know, we, we, we hear that self-talk, especially when our kids are younger. That was one thing I really liked when my boys were depressed when they were younger, because I would hear everything that they were processing. Um, mm -hmm. It was just out loud. Um, but, but how do we interject 
those creative outlets to to help our kids through these these low points, these valleys. Um, well, music, I find music is very, very, very healing and is a very safe way to express ourselves. Mm. You know, some char- journaling can be really nice. And as parents, like, you know, I, I've often, when I'm on the, the unit with the, the, the young adults, we write songs together. There's no oh. judgment <laughs> on it. And, Mm. you know, an activity that parents can do, write songs with your kids. Mm. You know, you can, you can use regular melodies like, you know, um, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that, or you can, uh, you know, just like welcome the space to do that. Or, Mm. you know, if I'm feeling like, like really angry, maybe I'll, I'll like dance through it. But, Mm. um, but I found really Oh, this, when it comes to mental health, creativity and mental health are so linked. You know, mm. um, the hospital where I work um, two days a week, and mm-hmm. one of the people who were hospitalized there many, many, many years ago was a famous music composer, and mm. he donated his piano there. It's a huge grand concert piano. He's wow. written some of his best work there. So... Um, navigating mental health challenges is really um, is a beautiful outlet to put it into something creative mm. and, and saying, you know, we're going through all these feelings. Let's get them out. It's not just for you. It could be for other people. You could right. just share it, you know, and then like yeah. really listening, like, wow, that's incredible. And just mm. supporting that process. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm just saying from like multiple you know, there's an autistic girl that we work with right now. And she she just loves to play and doesn't have to be technical. Like she just loves to play cognitively. Mm-hmm. Her intellectual, you know, she's a little bit on the lower side. Doesn't have to be perfect. You know, mm-hmm. we think we have to be perfect. The oh, beauty's in the yeah. mistakes of music. The beauty's in mm-hmm. the learning. Mm-hmm. Um, and the act of learning an instrument, if we wanted to welcome children to learn the instrument when they're younger, it's very grounding when it comes mm. to mental health. We have to focus. We have, if we can't learn an instrument, ideally ways to um, to w- find out why and then <laughs> help with that. You know, um, right. I'd love to be a resource to help with like writing music and, and understanding like why if we can't learn through and I'll say this too. Um, hmm. I now really feel like I want to say this. Yeah. Uh, this the school where this ch- the children were where they got a music therapist. They had a music hmm. teacher that didn't work. Why didn't it work? Hmm. They needed to just play. They needed to oh, jam. Yes. They just need to express. It didn't have to be learning a C major scale if you can't learn yet because hmm. you have learning challenges. But just right. play and make. And then when they can then you can well then of course um that's great advice well, like yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. just just even if you haven't laying them strum their feelings like mm. let them be where they're at um, right that's what was really connecting with those kids mm. not pushing it you right. know and when it got too hard all right I push back um mm-hmm. and this is the other thing that I, I will say when it comes oops Lost Jennifer for a second. I'm sure she'll be back. <laughs> so, so if you do have questions and you're watching, make sure that you you put them up in the feed um, and wherever you're watching YouTube or Facebook. And thank you for holding on. I think Jennifer will be back in a second. Um, I'm just going to um, interject here a little bit. Um, you know, we we're talking about um, using creativity and creative expression um, when um, dealing with mental health issues. And um, I think Jennifer has shared so many wonderful things, just kind of a recap. She's been talking about communication and um, a lot of things when it comes to mental health. Um, I think we forget that, um, whoops, she completely dropped. Okay. Hopefully she'll be back. Um, But we forget that um, when you're in a mental health crisis, and I know because I lived with depression for a long time, had suicidal thoughts from about fourth grade on through my um, my young adult life, actually through the birth of my two kids. Um, I don't often share a lot of that um, story, but um, 
few cycle lies in your brain. And, um, and it's a lot of self-talk, a lot of self-talk that is not good. And what Jennifer has been talking about with us is that re- getting those things out. When you see them on paper, um, when you write them down, then you start processing outside yourself. You allow other people maybe when it feels safe to, to look into those, those thoughts and those feelings. And sometimes they're completely validated. Um, and sometimes you realize, why was I thinking this? And why did I spend so much time on it? Um, but, but again, um, and when I was talking with Jennifer ahead of the the broadcast too. I was sharing with her that, you know, to have our kids sit down and write in a journal or to write poetry um, can be very um, difficult. It can seem like a very daunting task. But when you say, well, why don't you just, you know, use this melody? Let's let's do, you know, a, a, a song that we all know and you change the words to how you're feeling. Well, that doesn't seem as difficult, does it? Um, and a child will say, oh yeah, okay. Um, and they do that all the time. That's that play thing that, um, that is integrated into that. So, um, so anyways, um, just, just some great suggestions, um, that that Jennifer had to share with us. Um, so I'm hoping she pops back on. If not, um, I might talk for a while. I would love if you have any questions or comments to, to send them my way. I had not planned ahead of time on presenting the last 15 minutes here. Um, but I do want to let you know, um, some news that, um, we've been sharing, uh, we're doing a family camp and talk about needing, uh, maybe a mental health break for all of your family. <laughs> when things get crazy, I know what it's like. You think I can't even do a family vacation because especially as mom, I'm always working. I have to do the dishes. I have to make the food. It's not a vacation for me. Well, guess what? If you come to Minnesota, Southern Minnesota this summer and join me, um, Steve Demi and uh, some other, um, amazing people that have been volunteering with me on this, um, retreat committee, we are going to do a family retreat that we're partnering with the ministry of Johnny and friends. And, um, we want to give you a week of respite to have a buddy for each of your children and, and to have fun with help and not to make any food to, to be able to do things that maybe you've never done with your kids, like go horseback riding or, um, or let's see, shoot slingshots, BB guns. Um, we're going to do a lot of, a lot of fun things, um, at camp, do zip lines. And there's this thing that's like a, a really super big slip and slide down a hill. Um, we'll have to see if I try that one. Um, but anyways, we're going to have a lot of fun and create a lot of connections with community. And I hope that, um, that you can join us for that. Looks like Jennifer is back. I'm going to add her on here. Hey, Jennifer. Hi. <laughs> good to have you back. It's a yeah. good metaphor. I wanted to share something that I just realized a big part of what I uh, need to say. Yeah. Is staying connected with the source. Yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's really important. Um, so that's kind of like what just happens. Um, that there's a technical issue, but that's really huge. Like we think it's really small sometimes. And mm. I, what I really love about this show is that we're going through so much together and, yeah, and, and navigating this mm. and, and connecting to the source of within us, but also something bigger than us mm. and to help us push through that. And, yeah. um, and if we could teach that to our kids, I think then they could teach that to their kids, like yes. to keep that going because it really, it's passed down from parent to child. These are things we're not going to otherwise learn, mm. you know, and it's through values. It's through um, connections like this. And these mm. are really wonderful resources to, um, for people to learn, you yeah. know? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're back. Um, we have a question, um, from, uh, a viewer on Facebook, if you're willing, um, Kim asked, I wonder if studying a little bit of blues music would be good 
as a tool and then singing along with your own words. If whatever, whatever they really feel drawn to, um, mm. you know, I will, I have a very good friend who's a music teacher. She's a, a violin teacher. She's wonderful. <laughs> and she, her kids are doing really well. And, um, Classical music, in my opinion, is really important. Hmm. Um, and there's different, you know, certain brain waves are affected by classical music. Um, and also being around a lot of like teenage kids, everything's like TikTok, everything's fast hmm. paced, everything. Right. So blues, you know, if it's like a slow groove, like on the beat, that's hmm. really good for um almost like a heartbeat very rhythmical oh, yeah. that could be mm -hmm. very grounding um so alerting things could be like jazz they're very like that fast-paced stuff like let a lot of the, uh, the teens are listening to that's out mm. there now that's yeah. that makes us think very quick but things mm. like classical music and things with like a slower steady rhythm mm -hmm. it's very grounding to our nervous system hmm. so the kind of music we listen to is also very important you know yeah. like listening to classical music in the home can be really helpful mm. um you know <laughs> we're gonna start a new trend here <laughs> it, actually, it really yes. makes a difference because uh -huh. um there's some some you know there's some uh so some things I've learned, like literally will affect our brain waves. Like if we have mm. very, very rapid brain waves, like sleep, for example, is critical when it comes to mental health, sleep mm. and nutrition are the foundation building blocks. Mm -hmm. So if I'm constantly around this fast pace, fast pace, that's yeah. going to affect my brain, my brain waves. Mm -hmm. So keeping it in a more slow, calm rhythm um, in addition to exercise, which is really helpful, right? these are the things that are really important for mental health. Mm. Um, I find yoga to be really good because you breathe along with movement. Mm. It's very regulating. Um, so that really it can be very effective. And in, in my home, I try to play classical music. And also, um, I, I find that it really like strikes strikes the heart but we hear things in different ways and right we've gotten and we've gotten away as a culture from the more intricate music from the mm. more um stevie wonder carol king classical everything's like this very monotonous mm. mm -hmm. so like expanding that vocabulary i think can be really beautiful and um we want that for generations to come right um, yeah. And so that's, I think the, the quality of the music we listen to is important. And if your mm. child loves the blues, yeah, awesome. Go mm. for it. You know, it's what, it's what they love it. Excellent. You know, I support right. you 100%. And, um, and then if they want to learn more, if they want to take lessons, excellent, you mm. know, um, so I think that's wonderful. If that's what they, that's therapeutic use of self. You know, mm. if that's really like being 100% supported in that way, um, in my opinion, you know, mm -hmm. we, we yeah. try to work with um, whatever, like if they're open and say creative, this is what I want to do, nourish, nourish it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it, probably the, the question was, was started in thinking that blues music is emotional, but I think the majority of music is emotional. We just have to to kind of temper the emotions <laughs> that come out of some music and, you know, pick and choose, like you were talking about some that would bring out the more lovely emotions instead of, um, and it is good to focus on, you know, those, those deep, um, struggles and, and feelings and connect with those too, but you don't want to stay there. I know when, you know, you deal with mental health issues, staying in that too long, mm -hmm. <clears throat> might not be good either. Right. Um, have you found a way to, to kind of help students, um, or people that you work with to kind of move towards those emotions that, that would be more healthy versus kind of where they're stuck? Sure. Um, well, that's where I find the teaching of personally for me, the teachings of yoga, very important. Um, and, letting go acceptance and then still moving um through it and that 
has been really, it's, it's a life practice, right? Um, you know, one thing I wanted to say before I get into that is that exploring different kinds of musics is an idea. Like, hey, with this, this is, let's listen to a few kinds and see what you like. Hmm. Um, because if we don't know, like, what worked for me in that school was I tended to play more classical stuff because mm-hmm. everybody was listening to hip hop. Okay. <laughs> um, and I just wanted them to be exposed. And then my hope is that they would like it. And actually mm. it's been shown that that really does help a lot hmm. with, um, with the way we process things. Um, um. And so how to, how to stay in the joy, like, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because like, that's currently my practice too, mm. you know, like we, we have, we're here and it's, a, it's really beautiful. Um, mm. I've some, some beautiful books also that are just, I could um, send you a link to, you know, mm-hmm. but it's, it's really a practice. It's mm. a practice on, on finding that within and it's really going within. And it's, it's not just saying, Oh, I'm going to, um, get this shirt or I'm going to go be with my friends. We're going to do this. That's going to make me happy. What's mm. that? Ha- and that's a learning. That's a lifelong learning. And to be able to do that as a family is a beautiful gift. You know, um, mm. I hope that answers your question. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's about that. Ref- I think I've heard it in the past as reframing um, what, what you're currently looking at. Um, cause, cause we can look at the glass half empty or the glass half full. <laughs> um, there's always something to be appreciative and, um, to be thankful for. Um, and there's always something to complain about <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and difficult. And what are we focusing on? And, and yes, we, we can't just throw stuff out and say, it's never happened to us. No, there's hurt and there's, there's, just yuck in this world and we all go through it but um but it's moving beyond that like you were talking about and and yeah it's it's different for for each of us and and yeah like you were talking about before i really want to reiterate this is is the the sleeping the eating the the health overall health of of us physically can affect us so mentally Um, and we forget that. And just having connections, talking to other people, though that communication that we talked about earlier, when we can't communicate, we're made to communicate. And when that is severed, when we don't have that, that can, that internalizes a lot of things that we just should be getting out. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and music can be one of those ways to get it out or, you know, other artistic, if you got a a child maybe that's nonverbal and does art or like you were talking about earlier, dancing, um, all of these things can be forms of self-expression that, that move into that, that joyfulness, that thankfulness, the, um, those places where it, it is that glass half full versus the glass half empty. And that's so just being is really, um, and being okay, like just not having to do. And that's what I'm saying. Like, Mm. Um, there's a lot of, it's, it's really a lot of teachings, um, about that and just letting go and, and just, um, and that's, I think that might be even like a lifelong, like a very, very special practice. You're going to take that with you for the rest of your life. And, Mm. you know, I know we, we talked about, you know, like we're having like, in my own situation, I, we're dealing with depression here. We're mm. dealing with, um, you know, a lot of challenges too. And in addition to what's going on, you know, after COVID and all these mm-hmm. things, but, but I think the the deep connection with something bigger within ourselves and um, making it about the relationship and, and really fostering love and acceptance, right. that's going to bring strength to bring us through it. And, and I think that's, it's really, it's, and from, there's so many, so that so many teachings about it, but um, like starting things right, like well done, then well begun, like starting mm. things like from scratch, being very mindful in what we do, mm. mm-hmm. um, that, and very clear, because that sets a foundation of things getting all over the place. Like we want right. to be very, 
and and sim- simplifying it in that way having good mm-hmm. communication honesty is huge mm-hmm. you know even if we're like i don't think they're gonna like it very much right <laughs> yeah that's so freeing mm-hmm. because then it's it really coming from the right place yeah. and, and and dealing with those difficult feelings um just i'll bring it back to putting ourselves in the shoes of the other person mm-hmm. you know like like that connection comes first. Yeah, it really does. And and yes, I mean, you're going through it. I'm going through it with one of my kids again. And mm-hmm. um, it's just a tough spot. And, and the world is so hard. And um, yes, it's it's being being willing to listen and not judge. I think you talked about that at the beginning, you know, just being willing to, to hear what needs to be said or what needs to be communicated and have that open table available for that. Um, we don't often do that. We come with our, our preconceptions, our ideas on how we can fix something. And, um, and sometimes they just have to be gone through versus fixed. Um, yeah. So, so and we got, yeah. The, the last thing that I want to share is currently one of the practices that I have, um, is I'll share a little bit about like something the I'm inspired by like the eight limbs of yoga. You know, I'm not sure if the listeners are very much into yoga and all that stuff, but there are certain aspects of it, you know, that talk about how we treat ourselves, how we treat others, breathing, um, and it's very integrative. And it's something I find really helpful to be mindful and present in what we do. And that helps us helps me to have a better standard and mm. um, filter things out as part of this the practice to just be like present mm. and mm-hmm. that piece that yes. piece is really that comes from from being present in what we do and that's something to be practiced you know mm-hmm. and yeah. import you know, proactive in, in mental health. Yeah. Yeah. That, that breathing thing. When I was diagnosed with cancer a couple of years ago, that deep breathing thing came back because guess what? When you don't do deep breathing, you can develop cancer. Mm. <laughs> I found that out because you're it's actually your cancer cells are lung or oxygen deprived and they mm. actually do better in an environment that has less oxygen. So do that mm-hmm. deep breathing for your own right. health, mom, um, right. and and make that a practice for your kids to follow. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, so that, such so many different ways that our body works to you know that's free. <laughs> you just have to take the time to do it. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> uh, so we had um, our Kim on Facebook said, "Love your show. Good reminders for me and my mental health and my sons with autism." OCD, depression, symptoms, sleep and nutrition, such tough areas for those who struggle with mental health. Yes, I know. I've been uh, dealing with the same thing. We've been just sitting at the dinner table for an hour trying to get food into a child. Um, I know. I know personally what you're going through. Um, But yes, training them to take care of themselves. It's Thank you. Yes, it is a good topic. And then, yeah, we just sit through the hard moments and know it will pass. Yes, Mm -hmm. they will. They will. Um, we just have to to be there. So Jennifer, thank you for sharing so much. I, I'd love for you to share your website. And I know sure. you have talked to parent or shared with us earlier that um, that you um, want to make yourself available to, to, mm-hmm. to help parents if their kids want to write music and they don't feel like I can do this. Um, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, so share a little bit about your website and how our viewers can connect with you. Sure. So this is my website down here. Um, I share a little bit about myself. And if you're interested, like I'm a songwriter, I really enjoy doing this. And I also connect a lot well with children who have a hard time with doing that. So I would love to be a resource for you because it's so, so important. It's something that I personally, I personally love and I would love Mm -hmm. to contribute to, to, to you and also to empower them, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, So that's something you can check out. I also have some resources. Um, on my, I'm going to continue to build on it. And mm. I have a blog page that I would love if you could join and then we could just keep in touch because the more support that we have with each other, right. I think that there's strength in numbers, strength in, mm. in power. And um, I also have some songs that I've already released that are about empowering and, and um, 
those things also can be available if anyone's interested. Mm -hmm. I'd love to share. And um, and I've written songs and music groups. You know, so mm -hmm. how do how do we connect people through the art? Oh, you know, yeah. there's so yeah. many resources also online that we can mm -hmm. even look into. If I'm like a little nervous about it, we can go into that and say, mm -hmm. hey, you know. Um, but it is possible, and, it, and it's right. something to to um, to support. So um, that's available, and um, yogavanimission.com. That's where I get a lot of my inspiration as well on um, the yoga teachings. And actually, Yogavani Mission is nada of like of sound. It's basically the um, yoga of sound. Hmm. So um, we're all sound bodies, you know. So. It's about tuning ourselves first, and, and I always like to um, have that view. And it's a practice. It, it really isn't being patient through it and, and, and appreciating it, you know, because we're here for just a finite time, and we're all learning lessons together. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're listening to the podcast and you didn't, can't see the website, it's called, called dancingroserecords.com. And that's where you can um, connect with Jennifer. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for everything you shared. I really My appreciate it. it. This is definitely a conversation we needed to have. And um, I was glad that you were able to share some wisdom with us and, and some reminders. Because um, I think we have heard maybe a lot of this before as parents, mm -hmm. um, but we don't often connect it with mental health and um, helping our children in the long run to to think on what is is good instead of just doing what's good because um, the thinking part affects a whole lot more than we we really process that it's going to affect in our children's lives as they grow up and and enter those really difficult years and um, have to start learning to navigate on their own so right. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And definitely check out um, Jennifer's website, dancingroserecords.com. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you all. Um, this broadcast was sponsored by viewers like you. To make a tax-deductible donation to SPED Homeschool, you can visit our website at spedhomeschool.com. On there, you can find all of our resources, um, links to our YouTube channel, our podcast, um, the amazing blogs, and, of course, all of our awesome partners. So we have partners that um, offer therapy services, um, consulting, curriculums, you name it. Um, they've all been vetted by our team. So you can um, reach out to them with um, confidence that they are there to support you and your homeschooling efforts. So, so next week, um, we're going to continue this topic of mental health, and we're going to talk to uh, a psychologist um, who specializes in dealing with teens with anxiety. And so we're going to focus a lot of anxiety. We're going to talk a little bit about depression because the two are very linked. Um, so, um, so I hope you can join me again next week for, for that topic as well. And so, so thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks again, Jennifer. I appreciate everything you had to share with us and I'll see you all back same time, same place, um, next week here until then. God bless everyone. Bye. <laughs>